Today we're going to do number four in the Grandma Pizza series. This final one is probably my favorite one. And it's gonna have a couple of special ingredients in here. The first one is this Calabrian chili paste. This is Cento brand, but there's about 10 different brands that are sold on Amazon. This stuff goes a long way and you only need a little drizzle of this. This is spicy, spicy stuff. This is Boar's Head. Boar's Head is another brand that's local to the Northeast, but when I lived in Minnesota, there was a couple places that carried it. And this is natural casing, traditional pepperoni. It's spicy. It cups. So it naturally cups when it cooks in the oven. And this one is Boar's Head. There's also Margarita brand, also Hormel. Hormel, I think it's called Rosa Grande. All three of them do the same thing. They all cup. So it's the exact same dough we used in first episode, second, third episode. And it's the same dough we're going to use when we make Sicilian and round pizza. It makes it a lot easier. So you have one dough recipe that can do everything. So the key to a good grandma is to have that really crispy bottom. To get that crispy bottom, you got to put a lot of oil olive oil on the bottom of the pan. I'm using a Lloyd's pan. This is the same pan I've used all along. You can definitely use a standard uh, aluminum pan. So there's a lot of oil on the bottom there and just try to distribute it as best you can evenly. Well, here's a dough ball. And this is a 680 gram dough ball or 24 ounce dough ball. 24 ounces is perfect for a 16 by 12 or an 18 by 12 sheet pan. Here's a bowl scraper. This will be more important when we do rounds. You wanna to try to keep a round shape when you're when you're making a regular round pie. You could take, use this to get it out or you could just kinda of use gravity. But here's, here's our round. I'm gonna keep the sticky side up, but it doesn't really matter for this. It will matter more again on the on the New York rounds. And that's that's why I'm saving the rounds for last. That's the hardest type of pizza to make. And now the dough is cold, so it's gonna it's gonna have a tendency as we stretch it to want to just push back. So do the best you can to stretch it out now, but there's no way you're gonna fill the pan on the first try. It takes about two or three tries to do this. And then when you've had enough and you, you realize you can't, you can't get it on the first try, just take plastic wrap, cover it, set it aside for like 20 or 30 minutes. And then when you come back to it, it's gonna stretch a lot more. And then at that point, maybe one more try, you'll be able to fill the pan completely and it won't come back. Do you want the plastic wrap on top of it so it doesn't skim over or anything like that? Put it to the side. And this is a can, one can of San Marzano plum tomatoes. And you have a shield hand and a brake hand. Make sure your hands are clean. Then strain it one more time. These are the tomatoes we're gonna to use right here. This juice can all be saved for another purpose. And to this tomato, just add a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. For the cheese, it's a lot easier if you can buy pre-sliced. You wanna to try to get them on the thin side. Not a bad job. This is a six ounce, 6.5 ounce boar's head pepperoni. You want to slice it fairly thin, but even slicing it fairly thin, one stick is not quite enough for if you want that like maximum coverage like you'll see in famous pizzerias. So you need about one and a half sticks. You might even be able to push towards two sticks. So it does take a lot of pepperoni. A lot of that fat in the pepperoni is just going to kind of evaporate go all over the pizza and you're going to left with what you think is a lot of pepperoni. It's going to shrink dramatically. You're thirsty from the pizza. He just ate, he just ate the buffalo chicken pizza, which I'm filming on the same day. What'd you think of that, James? It's so good. Yeah? Yeah. Definitely check that one out. This one is uh, more traditional, I'd say. It's been over 30 minutes. Let's see if we can stretch it out now. This is the first time we're taking it off. Let's see how we do. Sometimes you can get it on the, sec on the second try. It's 
some pizza makers will use Crisco for the bottom of it. I, I just use the oil. And we're gonna make it. See this air bubble? You can just pick up your pie, pick up your dough, and then the air bubble will come out of it. You want some air bubbles. You definitely want that like texture, but if you have something so big like that, what's gonna happen is when it cooks, it might create a huge crater. So my oven's 450, 440 to 450 is a sweet spot. For you, it might be, might be more or less. If you have a convection oven and you keep it on convection setting, you probably wanna cook it maybe at 425. Ultimately, like this guideline of 450 for roughly 17 to 20 minutes, it's not gonna be exact. It's gonna vary on your oven. If you take your mozzarella and you kind of push it right in that corner there, then the dough will kind of like stay to the side. And then in a shingle pattern, just lay it out. All right, then our sauce. I find that one can, one standard 28 ounce can is just enough. And then here's the pepperoni. I recommend you lay it all around first and then you can start doubling up areas when you're done. <clears throat> you wanna make sure you have enough to start. It looks like a lot, but it's, it's gonna be just the right amount. And I, I think I said it before, get your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, preheated. All right, this is the magical garlic oil. We've used it in all three of the grandma pies and there's no reason not to use it in this one. So I'm just gonna put a line across. I'm not gonna use too much here, but. Okay, and then as far as the Calabrian chili paste goes, that's gonna go on towards the end. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna put it in for roughly eight minutes at 450 degrees. Then we're gonna turn it 180 degrees in the oven and let it cook for about nine minutes more, maybe 10. And then we'll add Calabrian paste and some pecorino cheese and uh, maybe one other thing. See, I told you that pepperoni would really shrink. It got a lot smaller. It didn't cup so much yet. I've been checking the whole time and it's got a really nice, really nice crust and it's not burnt. So we really want to avoid burning it, but you can really get it up to that point where it's like charred and almost there. You really need to keep an eye on it and your oven's going to be a little different than mine. So that's the thing. It needs about three or four more minutes right now. I can tell just by looking at it, it does. You're going to get better at this the more, the more you cook a pizza in about a quarter, quarter cup. And that hard cheese is gonna absorb some of that moisture from the pepperoni, from the cheese. Gonna do about a half a teaspoon to maybe a teaspoon of dried oregano. And dried oregano just always finds its way onto pretty much every type of New York pizza. And then this pepperoni spicy, but this stuff is really spicy. This is a brand new jar of it. I'm gonna go more for the liquid here and less for the peppers, but look at how red that is. Can you see that? All right, so we're gonna do drizzle. And you can just tell how spicy that is. If you have somebody in your family that doesn't like spice, this is not the type of pizza for them, and this is definitely not the sauce to give them. Or, or maybe it is. <laughs> Let's get this in the oven for about three more minutes. If the pepperoni hasn't cupped enough, you can broil it for the last minute. You'll take it, from, we're, at the lower, we're at the lowest rack right now. You can take it and put it up on the highest rack, do it for a minute, but you need to watch it the whole time. I broiled it. I went, we went back in for about two minutes. So the total cooking time right now, and I timed it exactly, was 20 minutes and 30 seconds. And I set the smoke alarm off a bunch of times. That looks good. 
Hearing a good crunch there, that's what you want to hear. There. That looks ready, that looks ready for a good photo. I'll see you next time.